guys. Good evening. Can you all see me and hear me? So, uh, welcome to today's class. Uh, uh, we're going to be discussing jaw lesions. How many of you uh, see uh, these cases? I think, um, uh, you know, if you have a dental department or a strong uh, oral maxillofacial surgery department, you'll be seeing a lot of these cases, uh, you know, or or if you have a cancer center, uh, you will be seeing a lot of these. Otherwise, you might not have come across these cases a lot. Uh, at Ames, we used to see a lot of them. Um, because we had a very big dental department and we used to have conferences with ENT, dental and radiology together, you know, so used to be taught very well there. So let's see if we can make it simple. Uh, actually, a very good topic, very nice topic to study. I remember teaching this uh, to my juniors as well during residency. I always used to love teaching this. Uh, no voice, is it? I, I think the voice should be there. Oh, you recently saw CEOT. That's a spotter also. I mean, a lot of these are, are, are good spotters. When will you upload remaining neuro class? <laughs> um, before 15th of August is a good enough answer. Uh, so intracranial cysts uh, and, and PCP and DT will be done by this week itself. Those are the two sessions which I have Udhar, I know. Uh, and then um, uh, remaining I've planned in August. So I want to include all of these, the topics which I want to include in the book. No, I am planning to uh, finish them uh, in, in the first week of August. So all of these should be done. Um, right? So only two, three are left. Uh, intracranial cysts, intra ventricular tumors, pineal gland, and, and CP angle. Those four are left from uh, from brain tumors. Okay. All right. Gursimran will be taking a lot of uh, classes. Okay. Uh, so don't worry. And he is covering every joint uh, for you guys again. So depending on the level, I think you will, uh, you know, it, it doesn't have to be all or none. Um, uh, you know, there are some people who enjoy the teaching of one faculty. There are some who start from basics and, and juniors uh, understand. So so it's a mix of both. And, and I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, stop anyone from, from doing what they are. And everybody brings something to the table. You may or may not appreciate it right now. But, uh, you know, uh, the, everybody's... So, Gursimran will also cover the joints. Um, so, so you get two perspectives to the same topic. Yeah. Uh, congenital brain lesions I am taking. I've already included. You will see the August... Uh, you'll see scheduled till 15th August. I already planned that. Uh, so, uh, you will see that uh, soon on the app. Uh, most of those are my classes and and those are a lot of those are theory topics because i want them in the notes okay all right so uh, yeah cortical migration is included in congenital brain anomalies essentially that only will be including because um, carry and all we did in spinal dysraphisms okay books ka uh, by 15th august i'm planning to finalize already work is going on the dnb book is almost final uh, spotters and rad and that I'm working on and then uh, the lecture notes so so work is going on as soon as it's ready you know it will come to you there is no waiting uh, time for that okay all right come on let's start now with uh, jaw lesions so when we talk about uh, the tooth, I'm sure you have heard of all of these parts and you've forgotten because we don't really study dental anatomy a lot. So a quick refresher, you know, the most radiopaque part that we have is the enamel. Below the enamel, radio opaque, but not as mineralized as enamel is the dentin. And then we have the pulp. So the pulp is the radiolucent part. So just to correlate it on the X-ray, can you see this outermost, most mineralized white, white part? That is enamel. Uske niche jo tooth hai, which is radiopaque, that's the dentin. And what you see as radiolucent is the pulp cavity. So this is the upper part, which we call as the crown of the tooth. And then we have the neck and this is the root, right? So this part here is the root. You must be, you must have heard of root canal. So what is the root canal? It is this foramen here, which is called as the apical foramen, right? So this is the apex. So this is the apical foramen through which the vessels will go up. Do we report dental x-rays? 
Do you report dental x-rays? We don't really report dental x-rays. Dentists usually see them on their own. Uh, but when they have a lesion, right, they will come to you. When you they need CT, MRI, they will come to you. So this you need to know. You may not uh, need to know, you know, um, normal intraoral x-rays and all. We don't need to do that. But at least jaw lesions we need to know because then they will come to you for, for findings, right? So that is what you need to know. So this is the root canal. And you know, uh, lamina dura, where have you heard lamina dura? One condition, I think everybody hears of lamina dura and then you're like, what is this? So that is hyperparathyroidism, right? We see the, yes, we see the destruction or the erosion. So that is a bone. So that lamina dura is this piece of bone. And underneath the radial lucent area that you see is the periodontal ligament. So we have the entire tooth. This is the root. Below the root, I have the ligament, which is radial lucent. And then this thin piece of bone here is the lamina dura. Is this making sense so far? Basics. So what if we will do when we study the approaches, you have to either see if a lesion is pericoronal, coronal matlab crown. So pericoronal ya fir periapical. These are the terms I want you to get used to, right? So these lesions which are seen in association with a tooth are called as odontogenic. Odontogenic lesions could be pericoronal, periapical. Or if they have no relation to the tooth, they are supposed here, nothing to do with the tooth. Those are called as non-odontogenic lesions. So everywhere in jaw lesions, this is what we are going to be doing. You have to figure out whether it is lytic, sclerotic or mixed. And the second question you have to answer is whether it's odontogenic or non-odontogenic. And the answer is simple. Is it related to any part of the tooth? Then it's odontogenic. Is it not related? Then it's non-odontogenic. What we use as a surrogate marker here... So this, as you can see, is the inferior alveolar canal. You know, the inferior alveolar nerve runs here and then opens through the mental foramen. So we use that as a surrogate marker. Ki uske upar hai to odontogenic, uske below hai to non-odontogenic. So above the uh, inferior alveolar canal is going to be odontogenic. Below it is non-odontogenic. So that's the question we answer. Once we have answered it's odontogenic, the next question we'll answer is, is it pericoronal? Is it periapical? Yeah, getting it? So that's the very basics. As always, we have to write about modalities. So x-ray is always the first investigation which the dental, the dentists uh, themselves can figure out. So there are two kinds here, intraoral radiography. Canal, that's the root canal through which the nerves and the vessels are going inside. Can you see this? So that's the apical foramen through which the neurovascular bundle goes. So that's what is called as the root canal. Okay. Not important. Fine. Inferior alveolar canal, you mean? Inferior alveolar canal, I will come. Wait, I will come to that. Right. So... Now we come to, I, I don't want to talk about dental procedures in root canal treatment. I want to talk about jaw lesions because I have no idea about root canal treatment. Okay. So that's, that's not what we want to know. We are not here as dentists. We are here as radiologists. So we stick to that. So intraoral radiography and panoramic radiography. Intraoral, what you want to know? We are going to go inside the teeth. So this is where intraoral, as the name suggests, we are going to have a film. This gives you a very detailed view of the entire tooth anatomy, okay? But obviously, when it's so magnified, we can't use it for bigger lesions beyond 3 cm. This has the highest spatial resolution and there are various views which they take as periapical, bite wing and occlusal. Again, something which, you know, we don't really have expertise in. Panoramic radiogram you might have seen. So this is where we get this kind of a view. Panoramic, as you can understand, it is a panorama and you will get the entire coverage here. Low radiation dose. Anterior artifact uh, basically means that there is a bite you have to take. They'll make you do a bite, okay, like this. Your anterior teeth comes in front, okay. So that is why the size of the anterior teeth here look bigger than it actually is. And that is what is called as the anterior artifact artifact okay so this is something which is about the x-rays which are done initially now when we come to ct uh, for any lesion ct is the mainstay that's what we are going to be talking about as we go along in our approach so we usually will do ct to better characterize the lesions what we do is a multi detector ct now when you acquire an mdct we can generate this panoramic or opg views all right so uh, you know we 
uh, when we were residents, anytime you would acquire a dental CT, we always had to send these recons. These recons are along the plane. So this is how they will acquire these planes and we generate this panoramic reconstruction and that is something we always need to evaluate uh, the lesion okay in addition if you have a surgical implant or if the dentist really want to see each of the socket here then we can also do these orthoradial reconstructions okay i'll come to corn beam ct i am coming okay so this is about the ct so we get panoramic view and we get these orthoradial reconstructions and this is mainly for pre-operative assessment and and when we used to do these we would just send these as it is without any reporting okay so this is what you have to remember here now what is cone beam ct you also get a short note on that so cone beam ct is a middle path between an opg and and something of a ct scan you know so you you get a very low dose ct scan which can give you three-dimensional bony view. So it's a very low uh, dose CT. That's the big advantage and it evaluates the three-dimensional bony uh, architecture without giving very good images of uh, soft tissue. So soft tissue, we can't really evaluate, okay? Uh, this is a special kind of CT. This, this is not post-process. This All of this is post-processing. Yes, Sara, post-processing. A cone beam CT is a different equipment altogether. Okay, so it looks something like this. It looks something like an OPG only where you get a cone-shaped X-ray beam and it takes around 20 to 40 seconds. So it does take a long time. Orthoradial are all recons. These are all recons only. Okay. As you can see, this is the CT we have acquired. So I'm just taking recons along the entire tooth socket. So those are recons. Cone beam CT is a different equipment which has a high resolution, multiplanar reconstruction, soft tissue resolution, I can't really know. So that's all you want to remember that it's a low dose CT which takes a long time just to give me the 3D architecture of the bone but not very, very high resolution for soft tissues. That's all you want to write for your, soft, uh, for your short notes on cone beam CT. 